Greetings everyone, it's Closer Look Time again here on the Multimedia Chronicles. Now today we're going to dive into British science fiction territory and we're going to kind of break from the norm a little bit. Normally I only talk about Region 1 releases because that's where I live in the world, but this one's kind of special. This is a TV series that I originally saw when YTV here in Canada picked it up and they were showing a couple episodes a week. I think they were showing it on like Tuesdays and Thursdays or something like that. Or maybe it was only one a week. Might have only been one a week, actually. But anyway, um, it was like Tuesdays or Thursdays, or it was Tuesdays and Thursdays. I can't remember. It was 1989 that I was watching it. So anyway, I just fell in love with this show almost immediately and absolutely uh, was just completely pulled in by the story and the, the epicness of it. Um, and the fact that, you know, at the time, it had pretty damn good special effects by BBC standards, you know. I'm, of course, talking about The Tripods, the uh, two-season series, which was meant to be three seasons, but sadly cancelled uh, one season short of finishing the saga, uh, based on the trilogy of novels by John Christopher. Well, it, at the time, it was a trilogy. After A few years after the show, he actually did a fourth book, which was a prequel to the whole thing. But... Um, yeah, so basically the idea here was they were adapting one book per season and adding a lot of additional stuff as well. The books were quite short, so the TV series actually has more stuff in it than what's in the book in a lot of cases. Um, so yeah, really good stuff. Thought we'd take a closer look, maybe talk about the show a little bit, and talk about this set, which is really cool. Uh, sadly, this has never actually been released in Region 1 land. It's only available in Region 2. Basically, the way I watch Region 2 stuff, not currently having a functioning Region 2, uh, Region Free DVD player. I have like four Region Free DVD players, and none of them work right now. They're all dead, uh, or just refuse to play discs properly. Uh, they skip and hiccup a lot. Uh, I basically watch these on my computer, so pretty simple. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to be watching them on a high def TV anyway, so really watching them on a DVD player or on the computer, visually, there's going to be no difference. So it <laughs> doesn't really matter. Anyway, The Tripods, The Complete Series, Region 2 Collection, today on A Closer Look on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. All right, let's waste no time. Let's head into the world of 80s British science fiction and go on down to the black box and check out the Tripods complete series. So before we get into the DVD set, I thought you might be curious about, uh, hey, Sean, which edition of the books do you have? Well, that would be this edition here. So this is the first book, The White Mountains. Very cool. The only one I don't have is the prequel book, When the Tripods Came, so, because uh, they, that one had not actually come out yet at the time that I, I got the, uh, the novels. So the reason I picked up the novels is probably for the same reason a lot of people picked up the novels at the time, uh, was basically to find out how the heck the story ends, because, um, the third season of the show was never produced, alas. So basically, it was the only way we could see how it ends. Uh, which was interesting because, of course, there are some differences between the books and the show. Uh, which we'll talk about a little bit when we take a look at the DVD set. And there you go. So this is, this, this is the one that was never adapted, The Pool of Fire. Um, there is some foreshadowing to events from this when uh, uh, during the second season. But... Um, that's as far as it went. Now, for a long time, only season one was available in the UK. Uh, there was never actually a standalone release of season two um, until we got this. So instead of getting a season two release, we basically just got a re-release of season one in a complete series set, which also includes season two, or I guess series two, as they call it in, in the UK. Uh, and then looking on the back here, there we go. Get a look at uh, side view of one of the tripods there. Very cool. So it was two seasons. The first season was 13 episodes and basically adapted the first book, The White Mountains. And then the second season was 12 episodes, adapting the second book, The City 
of gold and lead. Um, in the show, the city of gold and lead was just referred to as the city of gold for some reason. I don't know why. And there you go. So basically the same on the back. So it's just a giant uh, keep case in a, uh, uh, in a big slip cover. And we get a nice little booklet, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But here we basically got four discs. So the first uh, two discs contain all 13 episodes of Series 1. And the second disc, uh, second, third and fourth discs, sorry, contain the uh, second series as well as some extras. So um, extras on here, pretty cool stuff. Uh, we actually have a Series 1 recap, which was done at the time that Series 2 was about to air. So just to kind of bring viewers up to speed if, uh, if they uh, didn't remember what happened in the first season or if they'd missed it. Um, it also includes Tripods, the Pool of Fire suite. So we actually had, uh, they actually got Ken Freeman, the original composer who did all of the fantastic epic music for the series, to uh, come back and do a suite of music uh, inspired by events that would have been covered in the third season. So we get uh, kind of a musical version of what would have happened in series three. And then we also have, uh, we've got an animated photo gallery, so we got all kinds of good stuff there. And then uh, on disc one here, we also have the Cult of Tripods, which is the Cult of was a, uh, I think they did four episodes. And it was basically about various cult British sci-fi shows, like sci-fi shows that had since developed a cult fan following. Uh, they did an episode for uh, Survivors as well, actually, which was uh, pretty cool. And I think they did one for Blake 7, and then they did one for something else. I can't remember. But uh, anyway, it was nice that they included that on here because it does include some uh, cast and crew interviews. Sadly, the only uh, cast member that they actually interview is um, Jim Baker, who, of course, played Henry. Uh, interesting to note, after the series ended, almost everybody who was in the principal cast never acted in anything ever again. So I really got the impression from, you know, from the documentary, The Cult of Tripods, and just generally from other behind-the-scenes stuff that I've looked at over the years, that, that The Tripods was really a labor of love for everybody involved, and they really believed in the project and wanted to make it as good as they possibly could. And, um, yeah, and when it got cancelled... Thanks, Michael Grade! Um one season short of being finished it, it i think it really just gutted everybody and they, it's like they all just up and went done and never did anything ever again uh sari seal who played um uh, beanpole went on to become a teacher uh uh john shackley who played uh, will went on to i think he went got into real estate uh, or something like that, or became, or became like a businessman, and I think it was uh, Jim Baker actually got into real estate, so all of them just left acting entirely, which is unfortunate, because I think it was a great ensemble cast, and just really, really cool. Uh, one of the big differences, well, a couple of the big differences with the series versus the books, uh, well, one of the big ones was the inclusion of the Black Guards, which were kind of the Tripods Gestapo, uh, humans working for the Tripods to kind of keep order and keep the peace. Uh, the, the Black Guards aren't even in the books. They were entirely an invention of the, um, of the show. Uh, there's also a, a, a few episodes in Season 1 where they uh, spend some time at a vineyard actually picking grapes and, uh, and making wine and stuff like that. That isn't even in the book, apparently, so... Uh, yeah, I say apparently because it's been literally about 20 years since I've read the book, so uh, I kind of just refreshed my memory on the differences prior to this. But uh, so here, if we take a look at this book here, the booklet that's included with the DVDs, as it says here, this is about the unmade series. So, uh, so this is terrific that they included this along with the uh, the new music by Ken Freeman, because. Um, this really gives you some idea of what it would have been like. So we had, uh, so it starts off with a summary of the story from the third book, The Pool of Fire, and then carry on, carrying on through there, and then uh, it actually gives you a, a breakdown, episode by episode, of how 
the third series would have broken down the story from the Pool of Fire and how it would have uh, tied into the the previous two series. So that's the City of Gold uh, model there. So in case you're wondering about the basic story, the basic story, it's essentially a post-apocalyptic story. So think of like um, War of the Worlds. The War of the Worlds, where we didn't win, the aliens won. So when it when the story opens, you might be kind of scratching your head. It's like, wait a minute, it says that this takes place 200 years in the future, yet it looks like medieval times. Well, that's the thing. The tripods have conquered the Earth a hundred or so years prior and subjugated humanity to the point where they've been essentially blasted back to medieval times in terms of their uh, development. Uh, their development has been stunted and, uh, and the, the minds of the people are kept in check with this thing called the cap, which is basically an implant that's placed on their, uh, their heads. In the... Um, uh, in the um, book, the, the, the implant was kind of simple, just kind of like a, a plate that went on the head. Uh, in this one, it's this triangular mesh that is uh, uh, surgically put onto the person's head. So uh, what the idea is, is that as soon as people uh, come of age, at the age of 16, they are taken away by the tripods and capped. And the cap basically stifles creativity, stifles thoughts of uh, anger or rebellion and... Uh, anything like that to keep the people complacent and and you know properly subjugated so the tripods can rule over them. Um, so what this is, uh, story is about a, a group of young uh, boys who sense that something's wrong, something isn't quite right about this world. I mean, you got to understand this has been going on for a few generations now, so this has kind of become the norm. It's what people have accepted as their life. Uh, they are thankful to the tripods for ruling over them and such. I mean, it's, uh, mankind is completely enslaved by these alien people, or these alien um, beings. So the, these three young boys uh, kind of get the idea that, well, I mean, something isn't right here. Like, something just isn't sitting right with them. So they run away. And uh, so uh, Will and Henry run away. They meet up with uh, Beanpole later, and, uh, and they all head off because they've heard that there are free men who are uncapped living in the mountains, the White Mountains. So they go off to try to find them and join up with them and see if there's any other uh, young people who also are trying to be free. And, uh, and that's kind of where the story goes. So it's basically their, their epic journey to the White Mountain. That's the, the first season. And the second season is when they meet up with the free men and are joining their efforts to try to defeat the tripods and it's terrific it's just an epic ongoing saga every episode ends with like just the biggest killer cliffhanger so it keeps you coming back for more and uh it's just great great stuff really love it a lot um the whole series was shot on standard definition video uh the advantage of that being um the the uh uh blue screened effects that are composited into the shots match up a lot better than if they had done it the the old way that the BBC produced things where they do location footage on film and do only studio stuff on video. So having everything done on video meant that everything matches up a lot better. And I have to say the model work, like the model work, for example, for the, the Tripod City and the uh, uh, the composited effects in that and, uh, and the model work for the Tripods are really above average uh, effects, like model effects and everything. Uh, for the BBC at the time. So it, it is plainly obvious from every aspect of this production that it really was a labor of love for everyone involved, and that really rubs off on you when you're watching because you can't help but fall in love with it and uh, you know be cheering on the heroes and, and keep coming back episode after episode until, sadly, it ends on the biggest cliffhanger of the entire series, and we never find out what happens next. Well, unless you have this handy-dandy booklet in the... Uh, uh, the series, of course. So what I was doing is I was actually listening to the new Ken Freeman tracks while reading through this booklet. And, uh, boy, good stuff. Uh, it, it's such a shame that this will basically never be completed. Uh, maybe we'll get some kind of remake at some point, uh, you know, because, I mean, the story is a wonderful story, and it has been adapted a few times over the years. There was actually a comic strip adaptation that was done in a boys' magazine over the course of uh, several months. And that adapted the entire thing. It was adapted straight from the books, so it didn't uh, didn't take in any of the extra stuff that was uh, added for the the show. But um, 
Yeah, but honestly, I mean, having read the books and watched the show, which do I like better? Well, I like both of them, but honestly, I, I do tend to lean towards the show. Now, some people, people are kind of in two minds about it. Some people like the show better. Some people like the books better. Some people like them both equally for different reasons. Um, some people complain about the stuff that was added to the show, feel that it sort of needlessly padded out the story. I mean, the books themselves are actually quite short. I mean, each one is only about 200 or so pages and, uh, you know, fairly <laughs> well-spaced and big text. So 200 very fast, light read pages. And you can see, you know, some of the chapters aren't particularly long either. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of space there. <laughs> so it, I mean, they're meant for young readers. I mean, it's a young readers series, right? So uh, it, it's not overly complex, but um, but just a good old fashioned adventure story, basically. And uh, me personally, I like the stuff that they added to the show because it adds more to the characters. It gives the 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 it gives more time for the characters to develop. And also, I think having the black guards in it actually adds something to it because that gives the tripods eyes and ears beyond just the the tripod machines themselves and and whatnot and i like that aspect of it so it means it it, it just further cements the degree to which they have subjugated mankind the fact that even when the tripods aren't physically around they still have the black guards there to keep order and keep the peace and to uh, deal with uh, transgressors so Great stuff. Definitely recommend checking it out if you've got a region-free DVD player or have the means to watch Region 2 content. The tripods. Awesome. I powered through this as soon as I got the set and loved it all over again. And I'm so glad to finally have it in the collection. So there you go. Sadly, never completed, but uh, boy, what we got was some great stuff. Uh, really, really enjoyed this series a lot. And as soon as I got this DVD set, I basically just powered through the whole thing. Um, I, I had a handful of episodes recorded on VHS from way back when uh, YTV was showing it, but nowhere near the complete series. I had maybe a third of the series. Um, and I'd rewatch those recordings, I don't know how many times. Just uh, great, great stuff. I, I, when I recorded them off YTV, I, uh, I kind of strung them together into movie compilations. So I'd cut out the titles at the beginning and end of each episode and, uh, and just have them as movies of, of episodes. Kind of like the idea being kind of like how uh, Doctor Who used to be presented on PBS where they'd string all the episodes of a story together into a movie or an omnibus edition, as they called it. So I did the same thing with my recordings of the tripods. Um, but this DVD set, of course, presents all the episodes complete and uncut with uh, opening and closing. Honestly, I think it's better with the opening and closing credits because every episode ends with like a killer cliffhanger. So it really kind of, you know, it gives you that pause to let the cliffhanger sink in even when you're binge watching the show. Um, yeah. So check it out. If you like some British sci-fi, I cannot recommend this series highly enough. Sadly, only available in Region 2. You can get it on Amazon.com as an import. Uh, I will, of course, include a link in the description if you'd like to check it out. Just make sure that you have some means of watching Region 2 uh, slash PAL video content. Alrighty, that is it for me to you for now. So a quick thank you to my Patreon sponsors, especially Kyle Pellegree, my highest level sponsor. And we'll see you all uh, next time. Until then, thanks for watching, and sayonara.